So what makes these exponential equations is the fact that the variable is in the power. Okay? And for now, there's only going to be one way for us to solve these equations. And what we're going to have to do is make both bases be the same number. And if they are the same number, then I can set the powers equal to each other. Okay? So that's kind of the goal of this whole section. Um, the first half of the section, I should say. The other half is uh, something else that we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay. And typically what you want to do is you want to rewrite the bigger number using the smaller number. So what you need to be thinking here is um, 4 to what power equals 64? Don't say it. Write it down if you think you know what that power should be. Because okay, then I could rewrite 64 as 4 to some power. So think about that for a minute. See if you can figure out what power 4 needs to be raised to to equal 64. Okay, that is correct. So what we do is we leave this part the same. And then we rewrite it as 4 to the third. So here's what this means. Okay, If 4 to the 2n minus 1 equals 4 to the third, 2n minus 1 has to equal 3. Okay, so that's essentially the equation we're going to solve. 2n Two, minus 1 equals 3. So how do I solve that equation? You have to find n Yeah, so add 1. So 2n equals 4. So what does n equal? 2. Two. Okay, so then we're just solving a little equation. So the whole gist of this problem is you got to make the bases the same. And once you make the bases the same, you just set the powers equal to each other. Okay? Is that all we're doing? That's the first half of what we're doing. We're going to do another example, though. Mm -hmm. So your okay. answer would be n equals 2. n equals 2. And, and if we looked at the original equation, actually, let's do that. Let's look at the original equation for a second. <coughs> so if I plug this in to check... And we're going to go, does this equal 64? Well, what is 2 times 2 minus 1? 3. Three. And we already figured out that 4 to the third does equal 64. So it does check. So that's good. Okay. You don't have to check, no. But I, I just wanted to show you that so you can tell that, that that does actually work. All right, let's look at another example. Okay. So which number am I going to change here for the basis? Am I going to change the 5 or am I going to change the 125? Okay, so figure out what that needs to be. So we're going to change the 125 to be 5 to some power. Okay, so we're trying to go 5 to what power equals 125? 3? Okay, good. So this one has a little bit of a trick to it, though. So I've got 5 to the 5x, then this is 5 to the 3rd, and this is all raised to the x plus 2. So when I have a power to a power, what do I do with those? Multiply. You multiply. So what I have here, before I can set them equal to each other, is I actually have to distribute. And I get 3 times x, which is what? And then 3 times 2 six. plus 6. So now I can set those equal to each other and solve. So go ahead and finish that one. All right. Oops. Probably should write that correctly. <coughs> Bless you. All right, what's my first move in order to solve this equation? 5x equals 3x plus 6. Subtract 6? No, subtract 3. Subtract 3x. Okay. So 2x equals 6. x equals 3. How many have that? Wait, so when you put 5, x equals 5, you So 
So once you get the bases equal to each other, then we just eliminate them and set the powers equal to each other. And we don't have to worry about these bases anymore. Okay. So that's the first half of what we're going to do in 7.2. The second half is all word problems, your favorite. Okay. Um, so you can take a picture of this or you can screenshot it from your book. Let's figure out what page it's on. Okay, so this is page 1053, if you'd rather screenshot. So here's what's going on. Here's the type of problem we're talking about here. This is a compound interest problem. And this is going to be useful to you um, anytime, actually. You can open one of these kinds of accounts and start saving up money so that when you get older and retire, you'll have a bunch of money left over. If you can put it in a compound interest account, it will grow very quickly, okay? Isn't that your, um, are there like letters and numbers for it? Like 401k, yeah, 403b, no, those, these are not quite compound interest accounts, but it's similar kind of idea, okay? So this formula here, here's what everything means. Um, P is the principal. So you're going to open this account, you have to put some money in to start the account. That's what the principal is, okay? Um, the time is always in years, so if you're given the time in something other than years, you have to convert it to years. Oh my God, okay. I hate this. Um, R is the rate. The rate is going to be given to you in a percentage. It's the annual interest rate. You'll have to convert that to a decimal. And then N is what's called the number of compounding periods per year. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of different words that tell us what that number needs to represent. And we're going to go through that here in a second before we go through some examples. And then A is just the amount of money after T years, however many years the account is good for. The key thing here is that when you have an account that is using compound interest, it will grow very quickly without you doing anything to it. So the higher the percentage, the, the bigger... The, the number of compounding periods is, the more money you will have after that period of time, okay? So let's talk about different compounding periods. First off, if it compounds annually, how many times a year do you think that will compound? One. One per year, okay? So if, it, if you ever have um, an account that says it compounds annually, then that number is once per year, which means n equals 1, okay? That's not a great account, right? If it only compounds once a year, you want something that will compound many times a year. So that's the first one. The second one is compounds monthly. So how many times per year will it compound? 12. 12, because why? 12 There's 12 months in a year. So again, what this means is n equals 12. Now the next few get a little tricky because English. Next one, compounds weekly. How many weeks are there in a year? Like 48. No. Oh, wait, no, that's like... <laughs> weeks in a year. How could you figure it out? How many months are in a year and then... No, that's not true. How many days are in a year? So how many days in a week? So why don't you divide those, see what you get. What'd you get? 52. There are 52 weeks in a year. So that means it would compound 52 times a year. If you can find an account like that, you're going to make a lot of money. Most of the time, you're not going to find an account like that. But if you can, and it compounds every week... That's a good account. Okay. Let's look at, here's where it starts to get confusing. Bi-weekly. How many of you have a job? I have one. How many currently have a job and get paid every two weeks? Nobody? Okay. Well, I get paid like that. Every two weeks I get paid. That's what bi-weekly means. It does not mean twice a week. It means every other week or twice a week. Sorry, every other week 
or every two weeks. There, I said that wrong. Every two weeks. Okay, so that's 26 times per year since there are 52 weeks in a year. So when you see bi-weekly, and eventually when you do have a job, a lot of jobs pay you like this. They pay you bi-weekly every two weeks. So you know you're getting that paycheck every other Friday, for example. Mm, I got paid last Friday, so I'm not getting paid today, but next Friday I'll get paid again. Okay. So all the teachers get paid on the same day? Correct. We do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if bi-weekly means every other week or every two weeks, what do you think bi-monthly means? It would, you would think it would be every other month, right? Every two months. But it doesn't. Based off of what we just said about bi-weekly, every other week, bi-monthly should be every other month, but it's not. What do you think it might be if it's not that? Twice, no? Twice a month. Twice a month. That is correct. Twice a month. So that's confusing. So if it's twice a month and there's 12 months in a year, that's 24 times per year. So there are, I think my wife gets paid like this. I think she gets paid on the 1st and the 15th of every month, period. So she gets two checks a month. So right, this is confusing to me. Imagine if you didn't, if English wasn't your first language and, and bi-weekly was every other week, but bi-monthly was twice a month. Then you're going maybe, why isn't bi-weekly twice a week? Or why isn't bi-monthly every other month? And the answer is, I have no idea. There's not consistency there, in my opinion. Okay. What if they said semi-annually? How many times a year do you think you'd get paid if it was, or you, you would compound if it was semi-annually? Nope. Semi. What does semi mean? Sometimes. No, it does not. S semi. Six. Nope. Semi-annual sale of Victoria's Secret is all. Okay, so what does that mean? How often does that happen then? What's a semi-annual sale? Four times a year. Half a year. So how many times per year is semi-annually? Twice a year. Quarterly. How many times a year would that be? Four times a year. Quarters, right? Every three months. So these are some phrases you need to know because you're going to encounter them when you work through your homework. Here is a problem. Please take a picture of this or write it down, whichever you'd like. And when you work through these problems in your homework, the first thing I would do if I were you is write the formula down. Okay, write the formula down. Because then it makes it easy to fill in the parts that we need. So like I said, write the formula down. And the more you practice writing the formula down, the more likely you are to remember it. So write it down. Again, this is the amount after T years the principal or the starting amount, the rate, the number of compounding periods, so you put it in there twice, and T is time in years. Is that a plus? Or that is a plus. Okay. Then what I like to do is since I have to um, plug in one, two, three, four values, I like to make a little list of the four values that I need. And then go through and pick out the numbers from the problem and put them in the right place. So then all I need to do is be able to plug that all in my calculator and then I'm good to go. Remember the principal is the starting amount that you put into the account. In this problem, what is the starting amount that they put into the account? $2,500. $2, $2, $2,500. So this is what the amount is that's invested. So that equals P. Okay. T is in years. How many years is this account going to sit? 15. 15 years. So that's going to be 15. The rate? 4.2%. But I need to convert that to a decimal. So what should it be? 0.42. Nope. 0 0.042. I got to move it two places. So it's point zero four. <coughs> Bless you. So again, remember, I've got to move the decimal one, two places, and so I need to have a zero in there. Okay? And then N, the number of compounding periods. So it's compounded how often? 12 times a year. 
Monthly is how many times a year? Twelve. Okay. So now, once you've identified all of that, I'm going to ask that when you do these problems, you write the equation down with the values plugged in. That's the work you need to show. So essentially, we're trying to find A. We're going to plug in everything else. And so this is what it's going to look like. And this is the work that you need to show. Because the rest of this you can type into the calculator. And that's your answer? Once you type it into the calculator and hit enter, yes. So take a look here. Principal goes here, 2,500. Well, the one plus is always there. The rate's on top. Compounding periods here and here. Here's what's important. Another thing you might need to do on your calculator, you might actually need to put 12 and 15 multiplied together in its own set of parentheses because you want to make sure that all of that is the, or is the exponent. All of that needs to be in the power. So what I want you to try to do, especially if you have a graphing calculator, it should be a lot easier because you can just put a fraction. And if you don't have a graphing calculator today, that's okay, but I still want you to try to enter it all in at the same time. I don't want you to try to estimate or round it all. So go ahead and try to enter that in, and we'll see what you get. Jack asked a good question. He said, do we need to round it? Well, what, what does A represent? Oh, the, no, you don't have to, because it's the actual amount of money. It's the amount of money. Can, can we take decimals that go on forever with money? What's the last decimal place? I mean, how many decimal places do we go when we talk about money? Two. Why? Because it's cents. Yeah, so it's cents. So we only go two decimal places because it's cents. So you do have to round to the hundredth place, the cents place. Okay, so here's your answer that you should have gotten. $4,688.87, which I... Going around, most of you got that, okay? Now, if you tried to do it in parts, and maybe you figured out what this was, and then you uh, rounded that decimal, and then you tried to, add, like, you could get a different answer, and it would actually be wrong, okay? I want you to enter this all in at once. Don't round in the middle of the problem, okay? Now, here's the thing that's really important, and I want to understand, I want you guys to understand what's going on with this account. This person put $2,500 in at the beginning and did nothing. 15 years later, they've made over $2,000 by doing nothing other than opening this account. The longer it can compound, the more years it sits there, the more money it will be. Okay? And so for you, let's say you had some birth, let's say you just had a birthday. And you got a stash of cash for your birthday and you're just wondering what to do with it. You bought all the stuff you wanted to buy already and now you're just going to save it. Go to a bank and ask for a compound interest account. And put that money in there and just leave it alone. Okay? Try to get the highest interest rate you can. Try to get it com to compound as much as possible. And let's say you're, you're all in the 16-year-old range. Okay? Then... 30 years from now, when you're almost my age, 30 years, you're still not my age now, okay? 30 years from now, like if you entered this in again and instead of 15, you made it 30, it wouldn't be interesting to find out what it was, okay? But then you're not going to retire when you're 46 years old, right? You probably got another 14 to 20 years to work still. So then what would happen if that number was 50, so I know it doesn't seem like a lot of money, and maybe you don't have a lot of money to set aside, but if you can put anything into an account like this now and just let it sit there for 50 years, you're going to have a lot of money. Okay. So if you can find an account like this at your bank, do it. Do it now, because the longer it sits there, the longer it compounds, the faster it's going to grow at the end. Okay. So these accounts are pretty good.